And on court number four, the final of the women's doubles. You want, you want. Well, Xu, here we are, the final matches of today with the Chinese players Wu Lin against Tai and Kang. I think we both watched the semi-finals of these two pairs. They were very exciting matches to play. So we're very excited to see how they're doing. You can see here, Wu and Lin have not really been challenged so far. And the Malaysian, the Malaysian pair players have had a very tight uh, semi-final today. So I'm curious to see how, how this match will pan out. And I'm really not taking any bets who is going to take, take the title. On the adjacent court, the women's doubles are starting as well, which is an old Chinese affair. So I think for today, China is secured for four gold medals. Yes, it's, we're talking about four or five. A clean sweep, or maybe the Malaysians seeded one. Player, doubles players number one and two in the world, Kang and Tai. They will try to prevent this, of course. Yeah, we're expecting some fireworks from them. From all four. And we're off. The Chinese team, the other players, have gathered up, taken up a stand, an entire stand, and I'm sure we'll hear from them. But the Malaysian response is on the other stand. So. Let's hope for a tight match and a lot of emotion. So much power coming from the Malaysians. Arantai, not the tallest. But very powerful. All four very close players. I found Tai to be very creative in the semi-final as well. Oh. They're just caught out by the very high smash. Oh. 
some dribbles out. But... Oh! This one surely isn't. This Chinese pair also seems so solid in the defense. I do think they're up for it, but it won't be easy. Deception from Lie. Time. Oh. He has been the one to give up the points so far. Not having a very strong start to the match, but still early days. Chaos on the Malaysian team. But doing well. Oh, that was nice. Well, we're The quick shots. Getting more involved right now. Maybe some nerves at the start of this final. He's gotten over them, it seems. Good low serve. Well, we're done, Malaysians. Centimeters too high. It didn't look too loose, was it? Just an excellent return of serve. Oh, too bad. Got the strings. Neither pair is happy to lift at the moment, opting rather for a flat. Flat reply instead of going for a, a short stop shot or just a high lift. So we get his really fast and furious exchanges. I don't mind. No, it's fun to watch. Oh, took the broken record again. Back, uh, back to court again. In the semi-final, uh, Kang broke so many strings he finished the game out with uh, the record of his partner. A 
I would be reluctant to, uh, to lend my record to somebody. Uh, like somebody who already broke four strings, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With nine all, the differences are minimal. It's a good flick there. Short reply. And again. Mm. Yeah. After the flick serve, short reply, I thought it was in the back. Used to breaking four records in one match, I suppose. Changing it during the rally will, must become one of your skills. It's something that's happening more and more. And here, the Dutch area, the kit boxes are close enough to the to the court that you can try. Well done by Ty. The third shot by Khan. Oh, I was waiting for it. Yeah, they're both left-handed. No, no, it's lefty righty. Shows, shows you how good I'm watching. <laughs> no, both right here. I'm sorry. <laughs> that might actually be easier to play with two lefties than uh, lefty righty. It looked like a left-handed shot, but it was actually a, a good backhand. Very good backhand. <laughs> A lot of flick shots today in men's doubles.
scored good. The Malaysians are now 15 12 up. Apologizes for the net court, maybe for a hitting. That's a good serve return. Siding really well to keep the third shot low. That was a te technically very difficult shot. <laughs> you couldn't really tell, but... He made it look quite easy. Yeah. But to keep the shot low and even soft, that's, yeah. very, that's a very good like touch. A, a, almost a, a reverse oh. shot he, he played. Yeah. The Chinese pair, I get this, the sense that when they do get the attack, they can be very powerful, but their smashes are just not really varying, varying too much. They're all to the same pace, the same height, same trajectory. And the Malaysians are defending really well. So it really just comes down to the first two, three, four shots. Long, cold, cold out. 17, 17. <laughs> <laughs> so crafty at the net. Let's see at 18, 15 so it can keep this going. Yeah, it was challenging in there and challenge accepted. Hard work by Lin. Oh. Almost took over the attack. We're going for a close finish. So many options with the forehand. The idea that Lin also served right to the position, sort of favors. Just, just near his left foot, gives him so many options. But he's just not giving away the risk. I don't think you want to get involved in a rally like that with Iron Kai. You will, you're, not, you're in a big disadvantage. He reads it so well. And he's got plenty of options. And again, again they choose this, but I'm not sure. Ah, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> and also, Kang behind Tai uh, covers the court well enough that he gets the opportunity, opportunity to just step in. And there are two game points. The Chinese players are serving really well this game. Oh, that was a good shot. So it's Kang and Tai winning the opening game. game Chinese have to figure out a way. I think if the Chinese want to succeed the second game, they have to avoid these short, fast, fat exchanges with Tai stepping into the net. So either find the open space in the, in, in the front court, or maybe just avoid it altogether and maybe opt for, even for just a high lift just to open up the game a bit more. Yeah, it's, it's choosing between Two evils, really, because... You don't want to give the easy lift to Kang, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, he's got good power. But keep aiming for the left shoulder of Tai is not really working at the moment.
What a great start to the second game. I think I could already see the Chinese players opting a bit more. Opting a bit more to go for the, the variations instead of going for the hard, hard shots. Let's see how they're going, how they're doing this second game. Let's show it just a bit too loose. So they're already starting out the second game quite differently, the Chinese players. I see them play more soft shots. Yeah, of time. Maybe we can just take a second to appreciate the, some of the technicians that are working on this, uh, on this broadcast, oh! if you may call it that. Michael Lowe's providing a lot of the technical support, also being the director of this. And our cameraman, Krajvin Nasrin. Bringing you these beautiful shots. And also Krajvin Hoekman from content.nl for technical support. Lindit really well to keep that fl flick serve low. Arching is back all the way. And they're still in the initiative. Overdone it, that's too bad. are working so hard to keep the, the shuttle low in the first two or three shots and it's paying off them so far. Oof. Excellent defending by the Malaysians. No, you, cannot, you cannot pass him by the net, it's impossible. Ah. That's bad luck. Ty is reading it so well. Rare mistake right in that. We started this rally with one of those, what I would call modern services. It's a drive serve. What? I think that's a, the popular new term for it. What, what happened? What, when did this enter the game and when, when did it become legal? I think now, it's maybe now five or six years ago, they started with a new serve rule. You can see the, the posts near the service judge. And in the current rules, you have to keep the entire shuttle below one meter and 15 centimeters when you serve. And it doesn't matter anymore whether you have your racket head pointing up or down, whether it's above or below your waist, as the old rules would state. Yeah, those, those ones I remember. So in the old rules, you had to keep the shuttle below your waist and have your racket pointing down at all times. And now with the new change of rules, it's, it's a lot more clear when it's a fault or not, because in the old rules, it was a bit more well, it's subject to opinion, you could say. So people are serving higher and higher without being called for it. And now it's, it should be more clear. But it also opens up the court to more, well, let's call it creative serves. But I think at this moment, people are already so used to it. The effect of a drive serve is almost negligible. I've seen more people try and fail than people try and succeed with the drive serves today. So yeah, it's, uh, it's it is a, an extra option. It's a new players. variety in the game. Whether you like it or not, it's a bit up to you. I'm not a big fan. Maybe that's because you are very tall. The new rules, new oh surf no. rules. Oh, 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 oh. Let's not talk about rules. This was awesome. 
Amazing rally. Good third shot by Hu. Keeping it low. What a rally again. And the look that Aranta is giving them after the rally. Very confident look. Bit cheeky <laughs> as well. Let's, let's call it confident. Yeah. Oh, he's I, getting I a reprimand for it. He didn't say a word, but <laughs> well, apparently. Posture is everything sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're a Chinese coach, I think you should avoid these fat, f fast, fat exchanges. Oh, like that. Is over. Eight, six. They're eight six up, and I think every time they are the ones who varying the who are varying the pace, like going for a soft shot in these fat rallies, that they're getting getting the initiative and getting the point. And I think it's it's easier for the Malaysian pair to to drag the Chinese into a type of rally they want to than it is to for the Chinese pair to avoid that. I think you're right. I think the, the Malaysian players are also a bit more creative in their defensive work in the flat games. And maybe Hu and Lin are also a bit more steady in their performance. So when the Malaysians are going a bit more up and down through a game, I think Lin and Hu are just a bit more steady. And in the semi-finals, I saw Kang and Tai sometimes getting a bit impatient if it's not going their way. So they're going a bit more up and down. Well done by Kang. And a puzzled look from Hu to his coach. It's like we're saying, well, well what, what do I do now? <laughs> well, they are ranked number one and two in the world, so. Oh! They're Ten, tough to beat. by Chinese, and they're up, uh, they're up three points at the mid-game interval. <laughs> the, the Malaysian coach is not looking too worried, sauntering over. He looks very relaxed. Do you think he feels they have some more left? Some extra, an extra gear? I think they can control the rallies well enough that they should be confident that, that three points is doable. Four, three, and I see the Chinese coach Four, gesturing three, to just open up the court a bit more. Some just try for the, go for the higher one. Eleven, On the other court, eight, more or less parallel, the ladies doubles final, women's doubles I should say. Liu Liu Jian trying to get her second gold medal here, but or gold tulip, I should say. But so far, it's not looking that way. The other Chinese pair, also called Liu and Chen, are the boss at the moment. But let's focus on this court. Oh, 
That's a good drop shot. Yeah, and coach starting to worry a little bit more by the looks of his uh, his expressions and his gesturing. Well done, Mercha needs to get out of that. Relentless pressure by the Malaysians. No. And then thanks to the senior court. Yeah, that's too much. Just when you get the feeling the Chinese were back in the rally. on Chinese side. Oh. Very crafty at the net. But not crafty enough. We just pointed with that one. But the changes the Chinese are making is they're not playing these uh, fast shots at the net anymore, where, where Tai can try and intercept, but they're playing softer shots, where he has to move forward instead of uh, leaning back. And I get the feeling Tai is a bit better suited for like these fast and flat exchanges at the net, and then these really soft shots. But at the same time, if it was 12-12 right now, nobody could I be I wouldn't be surprised. No, yeah. no. But this is what the Chinese are doing better the second game than the first. Absolutely. And for Kang and Tai, it's quite clear. You want Tai at front and Kang going to the back. But for the Chinese, it's not so clear. I think they're both doing quite both jobs equally. Well done. Excellent defense by Chinese players. Legends are in the position they want now. Well done by Kang, good variation. Going across the body from Lin. When you're a defensive player and you're across from the shuttle, the easiest ones are the ones in the middle. The ones way outside, not be doable, but the ones just towards your right hip, if you're Lin, that's tricky. Well done by Kai. Flipping the top of the tape. And they're all within one point. He got away with that. Lucky by, no, no, lucky by the Chinese. The server turn was not of very, very good quality. Um. He, he was stuck at the net and Lin and, and Tai could pounce out quite easily, so very happy. Very lucky to get away with that. I think he, he could not have played a worse shot, but, but he got, he got the, the turn to the yeah, straight tie. into the record of time. Yeah. And he made the point, so. Oh. Well, he dropped the point. Lin taking his time building the rally. Malaysians are in position again. Excellent work by the Malaysians turning it around. Oh, wow. 
He's got some power in him as well. It's hard for Ty to really create the angles on the smash because he's not the tallest player. But he uh, has got such good variety in his shots that people are afraid, afraid of the reverse drop shot, the stop drop shot, the slice drop shot, that the full power smash is still very effective. Again, they drag themselves into the type of rally the Malaysians like. It's so easy to avoid, it seems. Anything in and around Ty's head, like a, the square meter around him, he's just very dangerous. Exactly, he's the, he's the best of the four. But he also places his shot so well that the reply into that area is also the, the expected reply. Oh, well done. Good shot by Tom. All square. You get the sense that it's it's Malaysian players for the taking. If they can come up with a good few good rallies, good variations, then it's theirs. And the Chinese, I don't know, they're sort of in the backseat at the moment. Oh, excellent shot. Yeah, that's not the best decision by Black Tom. 17, 16. Well done by Khan to step into that shot. I think they were trying to to pass Aaron Tai at the net, which they did, but as soon as you pass you get into the next trouble. And this is what it did so well the entire game. Placing oh. a few soft shots here and there. Yeah, sure. That's what's keeping it short. Long is, is the way to go against the Malaysians. So that's what's keeping the Chinese in the match. Difficult to execute. Meanwhile, ladies' doubles is over. No double crown for Liu. And on this court, we're at 18 all. The Malaysians are the only one who can prevent the clean sweep for China right now. You must not delay the game. Be ready. Oh. A reprimand for delaying the game. I don't think we have to complain about how fast this game is going. It's That's a good out. jump. Good power by Lin. I wouldn't mind a third game, would you? This is excellent badminton. I think the Malaysians are looking to close it out. I mean, at 18-19, it's possible. And there you see Kang plays the smash very well. Making the reply away from Aaron very difficult. Play. Oh. And it's match point. I think they've, they've been down the entire second game. 
You only have to be up once, and this is the moment for it. Stats Junior International 2024. Thank you very much for watching. Next year, 26th of February until the 2nd of March, we will be here again. Thank you so much. On behalf of myself and Yeri Nadstedt, see you next time. De prijsuitreiking van de Yonex Dutch Junior International 2024 wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door Van de Kolk Hypotheken. Hypotheken, financieringen en verzekeringen. Okay, what a match these were. I present you the finalists and the medalists from the women's doubles of the Yonex Dutch Junior International 2024. Yonex Benelux, Sales and Marketing Director. And put your hands together for the bronze medalists from Japan, Ririna Hiramoto and Aya Takamaki.
And also put your hands together for the other bronze medalists from Thailand. Nopcha Nanok Utsanon and Sabrina Sofita Wettler. And now for the silver medalists of the women's doubles from China, Yuan Yuan Liu and Dao Wang. And now, put your hands together and celebrate very loudly for the winners of the women's doubles, Yonex Darcy Jr. 2024, from China, Fan Shao Chen Chen and Ji Ju Liu. Medalists of the Yonex Dutch Junior International 2024 of the men's doubles.
Ronald Heistek, Sales and Marketing Director at Yonex Benelux. And give it up for the first bronze medalists of the men's doubles from China, Yong Ru Chen and Ze Han Chen. And for the other bronze medalists from Malaysia, Muhammad Faiki and Hong Kong. Fought hard on court number three for their silver medal. From China, Yi Wan Yu and Xiang Yi Lin. And here are our champions of the men's doubles of the Onex Dutch Junior International Championships from Malaysia, Kai Xing Kong and Aaron Tai.
you know. But before we end this edition, I would love to have a big round of applause for all the umpires that have been with us for this tournament. So, thank you very much. And we have a group of people that we need even more than the umpires to set up a tournament like this. We have the volunteers. Can I have an even bigger applause for the, all the volunteers that have been with us during this tournament? And no, I'm not forgetting you. Referees, Ivanka, Eric, thank you very much. Also, a big round of applause for them. Albert, je verjaardag was zelfs uh, tijdens het toernooi. Nog een keer gefeliciteerd en dankjewel. En er is nog één groep die ik nog even wil bedanken. The tournament committee, please give a big applause for the tournament committee. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Technische staf. Dank jullie wel.